Hi everyone and welcome to another episode of T-Dog RC and this episode is just a quick one really just this is post maiden flight of the Seagull EA300L Extra uh, and I've got a few little well maybe not so little jobs to do um, having done the maiden um, I came in for a bit of a heavy landing so I bent the undercarriage a little bit so I just got to take that off and straighten it up that's not a biggie uh, I've got to do a bit more plumbing uh, because I've realized normally I use these Dubro quick um, quick fillers and they just um, connect to the tube that goes to the carb um, and you just pull it to fuel it and then you can also drain it. it works really well but with this I decided just to do the the normal route um, but I've only got a filler tube and I've realized I actually need a T-piece go into the carb to allow me to drain the tank afterwards because the filler doesn't pick everything up. So just got to sort that. Again, that's a minor job. Um, but the biggest thing is it was, I'll put a card up um, now in the top right corner for the, for the flight, the main flight. It was acting really, really strange. I was pretty disappointed to be honest because I, I love the look of this plane. The engine was, was running um, really well. You know, and it's it's just a nice, plain, good size, easy to transport, all that sort of stuff. So, could be a really good plane to to sort of use um, every day. Well, you know, whenever you go down to the field and want to just have a fly with something, this is a really good option. But it's got this weird problem where it was just going from it was just the aerons were ju it was just rolling. That's the term I'm looking for. <laughs> it was just rolling from left to right. It was either rolling to the left, so you'd add a little bit of trim, and then it would roll to the right. He just couldn't seem to get it um, right, and it, it, just, it was just unstable. And I think the reason is, I've ended up adding that much weight to the nose. Uh, I mean, it looks, it, it's awful under here, because I hate adding weight to planes, but this, it's got so many of the weights that you get all sort of strapped together, and I think what's happened is I've perhaps got more weight on one side than I have on the other, and I don't know whether that's just causing some sort of imbalance. So I could obviously mess around with the weight, this room underneath the fuel tank, um, and I'd have to take the fuel tank out and then maybe lay the weights, uh, layer them up effectively, um, and it would be more centrally located, and that might be better. But I've been sat here sort of looking at it and thinking about it, and I actually think... The, the proper solution needs to be um, to take the tail off and basically buy some bolts of wood and make a new vertical and horizontal stabiliser because these are solid bolts are, and I think it's just, it's just way too tail heavy. It's a design flaw, I would say, for sure. Um, you know, I've put this, I've actually put a slightly bigger engine in than the one that's recommended. Uh, and loads of people have been saying um, in my comments that it, they, they struggled with theirs being massively tail he heavy. So I think that's the ultimate solution um, is to take that tail off as much as it pains me because obviously it's all pre-covered and all that. But I'm going to have to take it off, I think, and build a, a new one from scratch and get some covering film and, and make a new one. Um, because even if I put the weight in here and distribute it evenly, I, t I just don't think it's going to fly that well. I think I think it's it's just too heavy, basically. Um, so it's not really going to be that aerobatic because it's got so much so much weight in it, and it's and it's not particularly fast. So I think we just need to address that and get rid of the weight. So that's what I'm going to be doing. So I'm going to be showing you that process uh, in this video. So I've got to take the tail off. It's epoxied on, so it's going to be a bit of a challenge to get it off. But I, I think it will. I think it will come off, um, hopefully without too much trouble. And then I've got a trace around it, and then I'll build a like make a, a made up one out of balsa wood, and then and then recover it and and stick that back on. But first job for me is to um, get this cowl off and, and get the plumbing sorted, and, and just get those undercarriage done. Okay, guys, just to give you an update where I'm at, um, I've done all the plumbing and stuff that I need to do on there. That was a fairly straightforward task. I've also taken the undercarriage off. And got those straightened up so that's all back to normal uh, so then my next job as i've said was going to be to look at this tail and um, 
potentially see about making a, a new one out of a built up structure and get some bolts wood and all that sort of stuff. Um, I have ordered some white covering ready, so that should be coming in a few days. But what I've decided to do, which I'll show you in a second, is rather than actually just take all the tail to bits, because it is quite a big job. Um, I don't know if I've got the energy to do it all, to be honest, when I've only just finished the model. Um, but um, what I've decided to do is take the covering off the horizontal stabiliser and drill some holes in it using my um, hole saw uh, and hopefully reduce a fair chunk of weight. So I've took the covering off, but unfortunately, and much to my disappointment, it turns out that, th that the horizontal stabiliser is indeed built up. Um, it really didn't feel like that at all and obviously very difficult to tell because it's pre-covered and as you can see it's sheeted so it really felt like it was um, a solid uh, piece of bolster but it isn't. It has got a piece of ply running down the front here and then ply um, at the tips and it is, it's got quite a lot of built up structure inside so it is fairly heavy but of course it's not it's not um, like it is a solid piece and by removing these holes I've saved actually quite a lot of weight. So a bit disappointed with that. Um, but, you know, having said that, I decided to go ahead since I took the covering off, I thought I may as well drill a hole. Um, so I decided to drill one hole just to see whether, you know, that would ruin the strength and all that sort of stuff. Uh, and it didn't, so I've continued on. I've drilled three holes in it. It's It literally feels no different at all in terms of its structural integrity uh, and flex. Um, so I'm really pleased with that, that I've not sort of damaged it beyond repair or anything like that. Um, obviously it will have had some sort of an impact on the structure because I've cut three massive holes in each side, but um, it doesn't feel like it. And then when I recover it, obviously that's gonna add an extra level of strength as well. The disappointing thing is, as I said, it's not really made, made that much difference. I think in total on the tail, I've, I've removed about 20 grams of weight, which is not very much at all. But when you consider how far back it is from the C point of um, CG, it's right at the back of the plane, it will make a difference. So hopefully it has been worth the, the extra effort this has now taken because obviously I've got to rehinge it. So I've cut the hinges off. Um, I've got to re-hinge it and then recover it and, and all that sort of stuff. So let, let's hope it's worthwhile. The other thing I've done is I've, you can't really see it, but basically I've removed the tail wheel assembly, which was quite a monstrosity. So it had this great big bracket hanging down, which is aluminium, plus some other brackets and things like that. Uh, and I weighed that and that's actually about, in total, that was, I think that was about 50 or 60 grams. So that's actually quite a lot of weight. And again, right at the back of the, um, of the aircraft. Um, so I've removed that, done all that. And the reason I've got the uh, elevators taped on like this is because I've done another C of G check. Um, so I wanted those back on in position to, to get it right. And it tur turns out by doing this, and yes, I'll add a little bit of extra weight with the covering, but not a lot, hopefully. It's only those two two sides. I've, it turns out by doing this, I've actually reduced the weight I've got in the nose by 50%. So that is amazing, really. That's a lot of weight. Uh, you wouldn't believe it, but I have, I've had to put 500 grams, which is about a pound, which is, is just obscene, to be honest. Um, that's what I was flying with on the Maiden, and that's what I had to use to get the thing to balance. It was just... And, it's just so tail heavy. So I've reduced that down to 250 grams or half a pound, which is a lot better. Uh, still, you know, I'd, I'd, I'd like it to be a lot less than that, but I can live with 250 grams. <clears throat> and that also means I can position the weight a lot better as well. And I've, I've looked at a couple of places where I can put it uh, and it'll be much more balanced. So um, yeah, my next job is, I can't do anything else now. I've just got to wait for this covering to arrive. Um, and I'll get it all covered and I'll show you what it looks like once I've covered it. Okay, so this is where I'm at now. So I've recovered the horizontal stab. That's gone on quite nicely. So I've used the, the uh, Ripmax covering to do this, which uh, comes in one of these rolls like this. Um, went on quite nicely, actually. The only thing I, I actually don't like about it is that uh, and some people might say it's a benefit, but it doesn't have any backing film. 
So it's literally, you just take it off the roll and it's ready to go. But I always find that you do get bits of dust and stuff on it. So sometimes it's actually quite nice to have the backing film. I think given the choice, I would prefer to have the, the backing film on the, on the covering. But anyway, it's gone on nice. It's shrank down nice. And uh, you can just see there the holes, the lightning holes that I've put in. I've glued the hinges in on this side, so they're epoxied in and put a little bit of oil on them to stop the epoxy seasoning up completely. Um, they're probably still a little bit, you know, they're not quite as loose as they were, but they're absolutely fine. The servo will move those easy, uh, especially once the, uh, you've got the weight of the elevator on there as well. So that's my next job really is I've just got to get this back on. That's that side. So that's going to be this side. So I've just got to get the hinges. Oh, I can actually disregard that one. Um, get the hinges back in to here. And obviously just with a little sliver of epoxy on each side just to hold those in place. Um, I'm not going to, I'm just going to leave that plain for now. Um, I, I can't get the covering to match, uh, it's the blue that I'm struggling with. I've bought two lots of um, like solar trim or whatever it's called these days. Um, what is it called? Aura trim. But it's not the quite quite the right colour. So that was the last batch I bought. And as you can see there, well actually you can see on the camera there that looks completely different. It doesn't actually look as bad as that to the naked eye, but it still doesn't look right as you can see. So for now, I'm just gonna leave it plain I think it'll it'll still look fine because you got the still got the the uh, covering on the elevator so yeah um, get that done and then the last bit after that is to re-put the weight back in so I'll show you what I've, I'm gonna do for that uh, get it rebalanced and then uh, we're ready to fly it again okay so I've mixed up some 30 minute epoxy and then just gonna put a thin layer on each one. I've test, tested them, they, they do go on, they're quite a tight fit, so I know it is going to be a bit of a challenge. I'm trying to get them on now, I've got some epoxy on as well, but we don't really have any choice. So let's try this one first, make sure I get the right one, otherwise that would be horrendous. Yeah, that's correct. And then hopefully we can slide these into position. Might it may be easier with the epoxy on actually, but we'll soon find out. There we go. Hopefully that's going to be okay. And what I'll do is just leave it to completely go off. And then if you have got any on the actual pin, you can just crack it off afterwards. Uh, I know some people, I've seen people doing all sorts of things. I've seen people taking the pins out and dipping them in paraffin, um, all stuff like that, which is fine. But sometimes I find that if you just leave the epoxy to completely go, um, go off and then you just crack it, like I say, that normally does the job, to be honest. Um, but I have put a little bit of oil on these pins as well, um, just to help me out a little bit. Okay, that's got that one in. So, here we are, all done. Uh, just gotta leave those to dry now. Okay, so while those elevators are drying, what I'm gonna do now is sort the weights out for the front. Uh, and rather horrendously, I've worked out that uh, this is approximately the weight I need. Uh, I need to do another CG check there now. I've got all the uh, elevators glued back in and everything. I did it before just by sort of balancing them on the tail. Um, so this one's still intact and it weighs a horrible 115 grams. So it's two, well, 115.5, so it's 231 grams we're putting in the front which is still a massive improvement even though that's you know no one likes putting weight on on the uh, model planes but I think I was getting close to 500 before so I've reduced the weight by 50% uh, more or less 
I may need to put a little bit more on yet though, but it won't be much. It'll probably be maybe 20 grams or something like that. So uh, this one's still intact from where I had it before, so that's fine. But the other side fell to bits. Uh, so what I've done is I've just got one of these sort of thick lollipop sticks and I'm just gonna hot glue these on here um, and just make up a new one like that and hot glue them together. And then obviously that lollipop stick I can stick into the fuselage, which I'm then gonna probably, well, I might try hot gluing it in place or I might epoxy it in place. I'm not sure yet. I'll have to see. Obviously I don't want it coming out because that's gonna be a problem. So the only other thing I need to just make sure is that if that one was 115.5, just need to make sure this one is the same. It's slightly more actually, 130 that one is. Yeah, so I'm just gonna have to balance these out a bit, maybe just swap. So, well, it's about seven grams and seven and a half grams, isn't it? So probably one of those across to there. Just wanna try and get it nice and even, that's all. Because I think one of the issues I had with the Maiden where it was just swinging from side to side was, um, um, I think I had more weight on one side basically and that was kind of causing this um, sort of, what, what would you call it, like pendulum effect, I guess is the right term. So I want to avoid that and have it, have it as equal as I can get it on each side. So I think that's about right. So uh, I'll get that sorted out uh, and then I'll do a CG check and then I'll, um, I'll show you where I've got them glued into the, into the front. Okay, so I did another CG check, um, put the cowl on temporarily, put the prop on, uh, and then just put the, uh, the sort of balance, the nose cone on. And it's, in my opinion, it's absolutely spot on now with that weight. I haven't had to add any more weight, which is great. It's just ever so slightly nose heavy. But then when you think I'm gonna have a bit of fuel, obviously in here as well, so I've got nothing in there at the moment, and there'll always be a little bit of fuel in it whilst I'm flying it, because I, I don't ever run it completely dry. Um, so so the, it, I, think, I think the CFG is, is, is perfect. Uh, but obviously we'll, we'll find out when we fly it. Um, so what I've done is I've just epoxied these blocks of lead in there. There's some um, triangle, um, I think it's probably bolts, so there's some triangle bolts are in there to support the firewall. So they, they actually stick on the front of the, or the back side of the, uh, triangle so I've, I've put loads of epoxy on those and and uh, push them in place I've just got these cable ties in at the minute just to hold them in place while they're gluing I'd quite like to leave these cable ties in place um, this one in particular is going to be okay I think the problem I've got with this side is the bottom of the cable tie around here is actually touching the silencer um, and I think that's going to be a problem because it's probably going to melt the cable tie don't really know how much heat these cable ties can take and i don't want to risk it because i don't know it'll probably be in a bit over the top but i don't want it if it melts and just causes a bit of a mess inside the cowl i don't think that would be a good thing especially as it's near some the battery cable as well so i might actually just take that one off um so yeah but that's it really it's all reset up uh, as i say i've managed to reduce the weight by I reckon about 50% the nose weight that I had in the front, so I'm pretty pleased with that. Um, so next job is I'll just get the cow back on, get the prop fastened back on, etc., and uh, I'll take it out for another fly, and I'll, I'll try and um, film it as well next time I go. Um, it'll be the third flight, so you can see whether any of this work that I've been doing has actually been worthwhile. <clears throat> the only thing in hindsight I probably would have said is I, I do think that putting those lightning holes in here i think has been a lot more trouble than it's worth <laughs> that's for sure so wouldn't recommend that anyone anyone does that i just don't think it's worth all that hassle of uh, having to recover it rehinge it and all that for the amount of weight i've saved is very little i think ironically the biggest weight i've saved is by changing that tail wheel which was obviously quite an easy job but there we go uh, you live and learn so yeah thanks a lot for watching i hope you've enjoyed this one and it's just been a sort of a a quick one obviously uh, whilst I've just been doing this. If you're into fixed wing RC, bolts and nitro, um, electric, do a little bit of FPV as well, then please subscribe to my channel. Um, got a couple of 
good things coming up so I think I'm going to uh, be doing a new FPV wing uh, and also an FPV uh, a foam EDF that I've got planned as well it's going to be the next two builds I do so I'll be uh, filming those uh, yeah thanks to everyone who already supports the channel and all those people who subscribe I really appreciate it and I'll see you soon for the next one